How's it going, ladies and bruises? I'm Bobby Sixkiller. Welcome back. The sound I've dropped now. I've, I've been told I need to address the elephant in the room here. Uh, I have not been replaced by a younger version, a younger other person. I am still actually the same person, just with less of all this, you know. So I know it's going to be a hard change. We'll get through this together, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it'll grow back anyway anyway let's carry on shall we i think we are near the the end end but i've said that more than once in this series so let's carry on shall we here is here is all right as well taking the front entrance out of the deep sea fish booth we've arrived at the tunnel tank marty is playing at the center of the room addressing the fish and living creatures the creatures do not respond verbally because they're fish but the light, blue light emitting from Marty envelops them, and just like at the deep sea fish booth, they begin to swim about freely. I wonder why the fish don't disappear, since they're souls, so they should also be able to cross over. Because they're all Marty's companions. They've been under the influence of a heart of fear up until now. But, having been moved by Marty's pure heart, it seems like they want to help her. The fish's emotions, huh? Think you could hand in a paper on that? Should I write that Marty is glowing or something? If I write such a paper, they won't let me get into high. Won't be let, into, let me into high school. Big sister, you'll be in high, high a high school student soon. How cool! How cool! Marty is emphasizing her point by jumping up and down. The ultramarine light that seems to be not of this world is making an imprint out of Marty. As Marty says this, I can't really seem to answer her. Big sister, are you in the same class as Sayochan? No, we go to different schools. I go to Mitsuba Junior High, close to home. What about you, Sayo? A girls' school in the city. It includes elementary, junior, and high school. It's near Mountain. Well, since the high school's begun recruiting, why not try for it? Though the school you need is high. Say, Chan, you want to be in the same class as my big sister? <laughs> that isn't necessarily. It's not what I meant. Stop picking on me. Say, his face becomes red and she, she shouts at Marty. Marty has a mischievous smile on her face, so she seems to be attached to Say. I'm not used to seeing the power dynamics between these two play out so clearly, but it's quite funny. Anyway, let's keep moving. We need to go around the aquarium to all the new areas and make all the creatures Marty's allies, right? The fishes say that they'll help us and spread my light, so we can leave it to them. We should go look for that man and that lady. Allies, huh? Yeah, they're probably our most reliable option. But you know, if we don't hurry and find the man, no matter how I help them, they'll be taken over by the scary feelings again. Overwritten by the grudge, you mean? If so, we should return to the director's office. Yeah, that's right, I have to go in front, because the others are following me for now. Big sister, you two. Think about what you want to say to the man and the lady. Marty says, pointing her fingers toward the way we came. When Marty spins to the side, the dust in the air reflects the glittering light. It's as if she's clad in blue specks of light. Marty's words weigh heavily on my chest. She has also probably realized it. This is the end. The man and the lady all of the imprisoned fish souls, even the big whale. I'll bring them all along, to the other side of that fuzzy world. I want to stay a human. This is what Marty's heart is screaming out. But I'm not sad. If I keep waiting the whole time, I'm sure I'll see you. At that time, I'll be an old lady. Will you recognize me? Big sister is an old lady. <laughs> How funny. If their ambitions come to pass, Marty will never be able to go to heaven, forever trapped within the cage of being a grudge. Sounds like a ridiculous story. Sayu, if you still have doubts, maybe you shouldn't push yourself. Sayu clicks her tongue and continues. I don't want to accept it. I still have doubts. I also feel that I don't want Papa to disappear, but to be imprisoned by a shapeless grudge unable to be rescued, I pity him. He's already dead. So at least let him be relieved by Marty's kind kindness. My true resolve is that no matter how terrible he was, I still accept him as his daughter. It's not wrong, is it? Going about it this way? Sayu smiles with the most relaxed expression I've ever seen her use. It's not the strange result she had when we met, the person who recklessly said she'd throw away her life if it meant clearing up the truth, is a different, if, if it meant clearing up the truth is a different person? Like the time that Marty said she wanted to protect us, this is a pure wish. Mayumi, you should also probably be sure of your feelings. Even if this Hiyoshi guy is a real culprit who killed Marty, there's no need for him to die. If he can be saved, you should save him. If he's alive, he should have to atone for his sins. Sayo. I didn't hate him or anything, he was scary, but it, I've already forgotten about him. My only wish is to protect you two. Parting is the there is. You two taught me that. 
That's why no matter what my what conclusion you reach, Mayumi, I've decided not to deny it. I still have things I want to know. Sayu turns to me with a serious look. I look Sayu directly in the eyes and continue. If I think about it, we still haven't heard the truth. We know why Saginu Moreiko planned to kill the director, but then why is Ken Kenji-san her accomplice? And what caused him to go mad? Since you saw the scene of the murder, they probably killed Mari to shut her up. Saikinu Mareka was probably killed as well, being afraid to give herself up and hesitant to kill Mari. It's nothing more than a hunch, but I have feelings it's right. Back when Kenji-san attacked me, he tried to trick me by pretending to attack Saikinu Mareka instead. His threatening attitude wasn't normal. Even though I can't think of it as something a human would do, he did it. One more thing, Saikinu Mareka? Sayu looks at me with a mysterious expression. Do you have some connection with her, Mayumi? Why'd she keep her... Marty around at that time. After a moment of silence passes, I clap both my hands together. Without knowing the truth, I can't reach a conclusion, so we should get going. I'm sure the night of the full moon will be over soon. For Marty, and for everyone in the aquarium, we cannot fail, no matter what. Right. With Marty's cheerful reply, she stands in front of us and begins walking, just as she had said. As I start following behind her, her form cloaked in light, Sayu pulls me back by the hem of my shirt. It's unexpected. And a little surprising. Listen to me for a moment. Huh? What is it? Once we return to the real world, I probably will be too embarrassed to say this, so I'll say it now. Before I can respond, Sayo continues, her cheeks have been tinged a slight red colour. Our conversation earlier about high school? Since it's still about six months away, we have some time. Just give it some serious consideration. You mean about going to the same high school? Hey, don't just say that and walk ahead. I follow behind these, the two of them at a jog. My time with Marty's been fun, but it's surely against the providence of this world. The amount of absurd and frightening things you've encountered is probably keeping the balance. Soon, this time of terror will end, and so will my time with Marty. I want to keep being with her forever, but that wish won't be granted. If it won't be granted, at least let me engrave these feelings onto my heart. I will protect Marty, along, along with my steadfast vow. Big sister, you're too slow. That's not true, I'm with you. We exit the tunnel tank and head on from the Fish of the World booth. It's dark. On opening the door, the door to the director's office, the first thing that fi flies out at us is darkness. It's pitch black, dark enough to swallow up even the blue light flowing out from Marty. Big sister, be careful. Right. It's not just that it's dark. But there is some sort of ominous, some sort of ominousness to it. Something is actively swallowing the light. The light flowing in from the door should illuminate the whole room. But it's safe to say that that isn't happening at all. I have no idea what was happening in, to the room. Which should have been in a complete disarray from the poltergeist phenomenon. They're not here. Nope, they are. I can feel them. What a useless thing you've done. That voice. Saginu Mareko, I knew it. Saginu Mareko's voice came almost in sync with the answer to Sayo's question. But from where? Even as I look around, I don't see them anywhere. Kenji-kun and I, <laughs> I'm sure you haven't the cap You all haven't the capacity to understand. Even if we can't see her, we can clearly hear her voice. It sounds as if it's generally coming from the director's office, but I have no idea where she is. I'll tell you, the thing I realized when we met here, that I wanted you to know, because he loved you. Don't say nonsensical things. Please, show yourself. You may not have realized it yourself, and you may have disappeared without knowing it, but within this aquarium, the yearning you felt when you were saved by him. I won't let you say that it wasn't from a heart filled with love. Mayumi, don't engage, don't engage you. I know, but if we let it go at this point, I get the feeling that we won't learn about Saginu Mariko and Kenshi-san. Not just that, I don't think we can completely ignore Saginu Mariko. To speak of our relationship, perhaps I should start with Kenji-kun. Kiyoshi Kenji, he's a criminal who killed his mother when he was little. Without realizing it, I've forgotten to breathe. At this rate, even Marty and Sayu can't help but be interested in Saginu Muraiko's story. Killed her? You mean he murdered her? I realize that my voice has completely changed. He had a sister four years younger than he. His innocent little sister accidentally swallowed a toy. He tried to make her cough it up, but it became hard for her to breathe. She was likely writhing in pain. At that point, Kenji-kun didn't save her. For someone with normal feelings, that would be unthinkable. Kenji-kun watched his sister struggle against death and was amused. So she died. Like that. 
Discovering the scene of the crime, his mother criticized Kenji-kun. Of course she would. Since if he'd helped his sister sooner, she wouldn't have died. Lacking that understanding, Kenji-kun wrung his mother's neck. And as he did so, he saw his mother writhe in agony like his sister had, just as he expected. Then she... Yeah, she was killed by his son's hand, and he enjoyed himself doing it. Watching his sister die, actually killing his mother? No, that's scary, big sister. As if in reaction to Marty's frightened voice, the blue light flickers. But rather than illuminating us, it's swallowed up by the darkness. I take hold of Marty's tiny hand and squeeze it. Even though I can't hold her hand, I get the sense that I can feel her shaking. How old are you right now? I'm 14 right now. Having been asked so suddenly, I answer on instinct. This story is from when Kenji-kun was around 8 or so. So you all probably weren't born yet. That has nothing to do with this. Just tell us everything from the beginning. My, don't you want to hear it? Don't you want to hear it? There should be no need for you to be so cold, right? How can an eight-year-old ring, ring an adult's neck? Seems inconceivable. Don't act so high and mighty. Is that the attitude you take when you want something? That part of you is very much like your father, isn't it? At her words, Sayo silently cast her eyes downward. That's fine, but I'm the one who started telling the story, so I'll let you hear it through to the end. Her voice, resonating through the darkness, finally continues. He was reminded, remi remanded to an institution where he received behavioural modification. It's no exaggeration to say that these inhuman treatments made Kenji-kun who he is now. Having become able to lead a respectable life after sealing off his mental deformities, he began attending a high school near Manten. After some time, he began a part-time job at the souvenir shop here at Manten Aquarium. The past is something that follows the person who created it. His peaceful days were unable to continue as rumours of heinous criminal Hiyoshi Kenji began to spread, and he became the target of unavoidable bullying. To be sure, he was on the other side of fear now. In crimes committed by minors, the name is not supposed to have been released. How did anyone find out? Reality doesn't work like it does in a textbook. Getting back to the topic at hand, you see, I covered for him. At the very least, at that time, Kenji Kun was serious, an employee overflowing with enthusiasm. He treated his part-time job as his true job. He was more reliable than the kids who saw this way, saw this as a way to prolong their fun or meet people. Even so, in the end, Kenji Kun's isolation didn't change. I tried to close the distance between us, having graduated from graduate school and going straight to work. I probably found some warmth within him. That's unexpected to think you also require warmth. That narrow point of view was draining to me. Just like the fact that I was labelled a workaholic, <laughs> much like Director Sakuragi. Her voice mixed with sarcasm lowers in tone, sounding as if she's increased in viscosity. I give, gave him a mother figure, and he gave me a sense of purpose. As my friction with the director grew, before I knew it, I was being supported by him. <laughs> in the end, that resulted in murder. Oh, you're so impatient. Well then, since it seems you don't care to hear about our softer days, I'll leave that part to you. A woman's jealousy is equal to her instinct. I ignore the fact she says all this without a hint of embarrassment. In reality, it's because I don't really know how to respond to what Saginu Muraika is saying. He was different than I. I was unable to sense that his mental deformities were growing larger. However, the fact that I had no doubts regarding his proposition to kill someone shows how worn down my own mind was. Hey, that's... In the second he once again set his eyes on a person's death, it was like Pandora's box had opened. Without allowing Tosayo to continue, Saginu Muraika says her next thoughts without any room for pause. The genesis of the plan for the director's murder was Kenji-san. Oh, don't make that face. I cannot have you misunderstanding me. At that time, my malevolence and murderous intent was certain, and the one who slaughtered Sakuragi Isao was me. To be sure, even if Kenji-kun hadn't tempted me, I would have reached the same conclusion in the near future anyway. His deformities grew further, and he viewed death even more, with even more excitement. And you're saying the reason Marty was killed was just for his enjoyment? No way, that's inhuman. Big sister, calm down. Surely she's she's trying to make surely trying to make you angry and upset. She's intending to stir you up so that your heart may be consumed by darkness. Everything she's saying is in the past. Rest assured, you aren't the only one upset. But speaking in a loud voice, both of their faces come into view. I have to calm down. I'm the one who wanted to know the truth. Saginu Mariko's loud laughter reverberates. It grates on my nerves and I narrow my eyes. <laughs> I wouldn't do something so underhanded. Moreover, just now you said that Kenji-kun was inhuman, didn't you? 
You must misunderstand. It's exactly because he's human that he feels pleasure at death. I can't sympathize, but I suppose I can understand. Specifically because he's a human. He can feel happiness, anger, sadness, and enjoyment. From the instant the director died, this place was born. Since that child and I died inside Montan Red Montana Aquarium, we were likely treated as missing persons. That's why Kenji Kun's sins didn't come to life. It's impressive how he continued to peacefully live on and melt into society, while carrying the swirling desires of his heart, of course. That's... Kenji can use this world of malice, killing the girls he brought here. If he killed them here, no proof remained. In the end, Kenji Kun's heart called out to those who were of this place's grudge and melted together with them. What do you mean? Just as you suspect, having a body, Kenji Kun has been entrusted with the role of bringing fresh lives here. His soul is already assimilated into the Red Mountain Aquarium. The Hiyoshi Kenji you met originally is merely a leftover will. Half dead, half living. In other words, Kenji-san is already... Wait, the lady said assimilated just now. If that child's power can release souls, then Kenji-kun's soul is the same. Since he has a flesh body, then wouldn't he return to his original body? It's so irregular that there's no precedent for it, but theoretically, there should be no mistake about it. No matter how unpleasant it may be, I wasn't lying about wanting to hear the truth. But if I'd had the chance to talk to him, I wanted to hear the truth from his mouth. I don't know much of Sagino Maraiko's story, it's true. Kenji-san's past is so over the top, there's no way I can empathize. I can think of it as nothing more than a tale. However, if, we, if I've believed him once, then I want to properly understand the situation. I want at least, I at least want to get a proper farewell. Why would you two do something that would put you at a disadvantage? It is a woman's obstinance. I wonder if you can grasp at least that much. Don't toy with me. I shout at Sagi no Maraiko, who decides to mess with us further in this situation. My voice doesn't have an echo, as if it's swallowed by the darkness. At least let me see you. You're alone now, aren't you? If you were with Kenji-san, the director, he would try to swallow us up. I wonder if that's- is that really the case? <laughs> Her laughter gradually becomes louder. Her ominous voice completely fills the room. How annoying. It probably wasn't a reaction to Sayu's words, but the voice suddenly stops. At the same time that the voice disappears, a light comes on in the director's office. The blue light flowing from the tank lights up in the room. In the center of the director's office, lying on his side on the desk, is Hiyoshi Kenji's corpse. Kenji-san? As if the stake had been thrust through his, through his large chest, there's a red stain where his heart should be. The antique furniture is wet with blood. Kenji-san's body not making the slightest movement. Even without checking his pulse or breathing, instinct tells me that this is a dead body. Being curious, we do not go near him. Saki no Maraiko is likely hiding somewhere. What exactly is going on here? The three of us crowd together, each looking in different directions. Even as I ask that in a loud voice, I receive no response. He's dead. What is this? Where is Saki no Maraiko? She's here, big sis. Within that light. Marty's pointing to the blue light illuminating Hiyoshi Kenji's corpse. Is comprehension still not coming to you, this man? I killed him. From within the light, only the voice reverberates. Before long, the light creates an outline, and the transparent form of Sagu no Maraiko faintly appears. Once she is visible, I notice that she seems to have taken on the appearance of the past version of herself. Her Chignong style hair has come undone, now somewhat long as it was in the video from two years ago. Killed him, but wasn't he your ally? Didn't you love him? That's right. That's why. Sagi no Maraiko stretches her spine so she stands tall like a model, folding her arms and sliding her right hand along her, ne uh, her cheek. Thanks to her thick makeup, she looks older, though I get the sense that with no makeup she'd be quite the young looking beauty. Things have settled down enough that I can calmly observe her, although it's not my trembling heart, but rather the air surrounding the director's office that has. Contrary to the circumstances, it's a gentle atmosphere. I didn't consider him an ally. He was a part of me, needed to achieve one objective, equal to one seedling of the grudge. I told you, didn't I? That it's a woman's obstinance. Sincerely as a human, as a woman, I decided he had to die. Are you saying that you betrayed the Aquarium and Papa? <laughs> From the perspective of humans, it would seem that way. At any rate, since I am a higher order higher order being, 
I wouldn't be able to revert to a merely logical one. This is your fault, Marty-chan. Marty? When she hears their name called, Marty covers her face. She seems to be turning into something we cannot comprehend. I'm sure that, if I understand Sagi no Moraiko's story correctly, that's what we should be, we be led to believe. That's due to you releasing the souls. I am also being affected by that. I remember that I loved the aquarium, studied, put in effort, all the memories leading me to this point. Just before I was going to kill you for witnessing the director's murder, I also remember that I hesitated. I couldn't run from who I was. That's why you didn't kill Marty, isn't it? You couldn't kill a girl who loved the aquarium. You really are a kind person, aren't you? Haha, <laughs> what a foolish thing. Kindness, beauty, hatred, anger, they're all pieces of the same whole. Nothing more than pieces of the human created ego. It's probably a strange conversation for one who has already passed, but I chose death for myself. Even if I can't go to some place like heaven, I want to die as myself, as Sagi no Moraiko. Why'd you kill him? What happened to Papa? To make a distinction, that's why I brought Kenji-kun along. In the end, love was just not enough. That's why we both sought understanding. The director, Sakuragi Isao, having already detached from Kenji-kun's body. If he wasn't going back to the real world, then he didn't need it. Thanks to that girl's power, the aquarium has already begun to crumble. Even if it find, even if it's by himself, he likely intends to be sublimated into this place's new reality. That man is an individual, after all. Though guided by the assembled will of the aquarium, no one can run from the poison he carries, his desire to exceed the limits of humanity. Humans cannot create their jurisdiction, no. You in particular may be the exception. Sagi no Moraiko looks at Mari as she says this. I realise that, gradually, Sagi no Moraiko's form is becoming pale. The light flowing from the tank turns and blends with the blue light emanating from Marty's body, mixing in the centre of the room to create a violet colour. Each is bound by the limits of the human heart, and it seems as if there is no way to com but to combine them. What's stopping this is the looks, flesh, and heart that make an individual. I will not yield my soul to you. Do not expect me to be your salvation. You can all fall into the very pits of despair for all I care. If we do ever meet in confrontation, you can choke on your own poison. Cursing us, those were her last words. Sagi no Moraiko caresses Kenji-san's body and gives a loud, wicked laugh. We're not shocked by this. Sagi no Moraiko's body, already transparent, gradually breaks up into light blue coloured particles. And from her toes to her head, disappears within three seconds. If you can disappear, at least go in peace. Looking at the disappearing Sagi no Muraiko, I place my hands together in front of my chest and offer my prayers. Mayumi? Sorry, Sayu. She's the one who killed your father, but I feel just a little bit sorry for her. She seems so sad and lonely. You don't need to pay me any mind. I told you that I would accept any conclusion you reached, Mayumi. This is one of those conclusions. It's just that... Doesn't having such a personality bring you trouble? It's alright, I'm not alone. I've realised something. I wasn't able to talk to Kenji-san directly about the deaths he caused himself, or how he finally was able to express his love in the death he caused, or about how he could personally cause death after death with one woman. Even in the moment Sagi no Muraika disappeared, I wasn't able to get the one thing I needed from her either. Either way, as if sneering at me, the loud laugh echoes throughout the room. Let's go, Marty. Is that man okay? Yeah, I can't do anything for him. Borrowing her words, the reason is because of my own obstinance. Taking Marty's hand, which I am unable to feel, we leave the director's office. What is happening here? What is this? The aquarium is being worn away. As soon as we leave the director's office, we are shocked at the scene before our eyes. Spots here and there on the walls and floor are being di dyed in black. It looks as though it has been eaten away by insects. The spots with holes don't allow any light to pass through, causing the darkness to spread. Little particles of, li of light... <coughs> sorry. Little particles of light blue are floating up from the outlines. We return to the Fish of the World booth through the staff passageway. The path on the way there is similar in a similar worm-eaten state. On the other hand, the aquarium itself seems to be c becoming light. If Sagi no Muraika's disappearance can be considered her crossing over, then the scene suggests that this space itself is also crossing over. One by one, the particles themselves seem to be proof of the life that was here. The humans and fish, there's no mistaking that they are becoming the light. You don't need to worry, big sister. Since I freed everyone, this place is coming to an end. It's losing the life energy. 
The strength from the cells used to maintain itself. Marty, how long do you think is left? I don't know, but probably less than an hour. An hour? In other words, that's how much time I have left with Marty. What happens if we're too late? You'll become fuzzy like the rest of us. You guys aren't supposed to get like that yet. I know that. All we've done up to this point would be for nothing. If we have an hour left, I want to say something to my papa. Marty, do you know where papa is? Yeah. Marty points in the direction of the exit. That man is toward the entrance. I'm sure he's waiting there intentionally. The director is probably waiting for you, sire. Then it works out for us. Sorry, but will you come with me up? Come with me? Of course. Our voices come in and out of in unison, and we begin walking. I was waiting for you. Director? Papa! Naturally, it's not Hiyoshi Kenji that's there. This time it's the director, the body of Sakuragi Yusao himself standing at the Tokyo Bay booth near the entrance. His body isn't transparent like Sagino Muraika's was just before she disappeared. Throwing back, thinking back on it, since he had a proper existence here, it would probably be more notable if he were transparent. Cases like Marty should be the exception. However, his objective is supposedly to assimilate with the aquarium. When he does, I'm sure he'll cast off the appearance of his spirit. So he takes a step ahead and begins to speak to him. Finally, I can see my, see my real papa. The Tokyo Bay booth is no exception, as it is in the process of having holes open here and there as it turns into blue light. Even as I look around, I don't see the giant whale that appeared in the director's office anyway. If that was created by the souls of the grudge, then it may no longer be able to come together. The higher order beings swallowed up by that whale. They were said to be turned into some into mere grudges. But if that whale can no longer take its form, we may try he may try to do something. This whole time, I've been chasing the truth, but no matter how much I pursued it, I couldn't seem to meet up with you, Papa. I finally found you. But I'm sure this is the last time, so I want to tell you how I feel. I decided to just watch. I need to reach my own conclusions, so I think Saya needs to do the same. At this moment, Saya was trying to make a distinction. I cannot hinder her. Saya, won't you come with me? Huh? Papa, what? Before Saya can finish speaking, the director takes over the conversation. We are humans in the end. Nothing remains after we die. No matter how intensely we display our emotions in the end, they are meaningless to this world. Once we cease being individuals and give ourselves to the collective will of this place's grudge, we can become something new. We would remain as one part of this world's reality. It is the purest form of significance, and in it, we become eternal. Now that Saginu Muraika has disappeared, my own directive is all that remains. If I don't create a new concept, then under the circumstances I'll be swallowed up by the current reality of this place. But if you lend me your strength, Sayu, I can definitely achieve my goal. Papa, you've changed after all, I really don't get you. So you're, you're so clever, so you would understand right away. I refuse. I have no interest in doing so. It's a shame, being rejected by my daughter. The director's words are nothing more than words. He doesn't even seem at all remorseful. His words have no weight, and his eyes lack emotion. Yeah. As the room itself is expressing its emotions, its destruction progresses. The area at, the, at my feet begins to disappear, as it is swallowed up by something black. That black is surely... it's nothingness. Since it didn't really exist to begin with, the destroyed parts of Red Mountain Aquarium are returning to nothingness. If we don't avoid it, we'll be in danger. Yeah, it's okay. More importantly... Sayu is a step ahead of us, facing the director. Even the increasing destruction around her hasn't shaken her. How long has, she been go has this been going on? You being swept up by your delusions. Wanting to become a mere concept is something so stupid, even an elementary school student wouldn't wish for it. Sayu, this isn't an individual's aspiration. Please understand. This is what you might call the cooperative desire of living beings. I no longer bear that will, my, my will alone. The way I am now, I'm like a CPU. To move this large machine, that is precisely my directive. The moment this world was born along the lines of my grudge, I have aspired to a higher order existence. The numerous souls were accumulated here for that reason. That's enough. When it was just about your grudge, I could empathize with you. If we all ended up with your resentment and your hatred like a normal human, it would have been fine. Why would you create this wor the world of this red mountain aquarium? Even if I didn't tell you, you could understand by becoming one with me. Papa, I can't understand your way of thinking. Say, so, I feel so sad. Aren't you my daughter? You should already understand the time is short. Come with me. Come with your father. The director extends his right hand towards Saya. 
He places his hand on, on her head and rubs her head with soft movements. When compared with Sayo's seemingly small form, the director's hand looks large. At this point in particular, he definitely seems like a father. After staying silent and having her head rubbed for a while, Sayo looks down and bites her lip. After about 10 seconds of saying nothing, Sayo finally clicks her tongue, as if she's becoming impatient. That's enough. In sync with her shout, she brushes the director's hand away. Before we know it, as if reacting to the intense expression of emotion, the erosion reaches Sayu's feet. Sayu, watch out! Sayu shows no reaction to my words and doesn't move out of the way. With that same forcefulness, she continues, I came here to say farewell to you, Papa. Trying to do something now will not change my mind. However, I have one final wish. Will you hear it? Sayu tilts her head and raises the pitch of the end of his sentence, precisely because this is between a parent and a child. I feel like I can get a clear sense of the distance between them. Stop this nonsense. Be a good sport and cross over. It shouldn't be hard to give yourself over to the freedom Marty is offering. It is a hope the size of the eye of a needle. Even so, Sayu is gambling on the feelings her father carries. Yeah, if it's no good, then it's fine. Even so, I am your daughter. I've decided to maintain my sense of pride in being your daughter. Without leaving any time to hear his response, Sayu briskly finishes speaking. She spins her body back in our direction and signals us with a bitter smile. I feel like I don't want to see that expression on Sayu's face. To see her try and deceive us by hiding her painful feelings behind a smile. Huh. Sayu-chan? Suddenly, Marty and I both raise our voices in astonishment. But unmistakably, the most surprised is Sayu herself. The director has grabbed onto Sayu from behind. Papa, why? The director says nothing, his eyes closed. He seems to be holding on to his one and only daughter for warmth. It feels like a long time. He may be trying to m take up the reminder of our time here. The remainder of our time here. Even so, it seems the love he finds there with open eyes. Within this crumbling world, the two of them together stand out. Would you please be good and cross over for me, Papa? I don't like the way you said that, Say. There's nothing I can do. Since I don't know any other way to say it. Say, I'm sorry for the trouble I've caused. I won't forgive you, but since you're dead, it's okay, I'm not mad. The air enveloping them is a gentle one. I feel that since this is the parting of a parent and child, it is more serene than it is sad. That's why I feel uneasy about it. Sayu-chan, it's dangerous. At almost the same time as Marty speaks, I jump up. Huh? It appeared from the floor. The whale! The black giant comprised of the darkness of human hearts, the whale itself. As if appearing from the director's shadow itself, it leaps up from the floor that is that served as its sea level. Being only a second away from being consumed, he pushes Sayo away. Even so, the giant crashes into them, knocking them to the opposite sides. Stay back! Reacting to Marty's words, the intense blue light envelops the room. However, the black shadow casts a crimson light. Mixed it with Marty's light, the room is dyed of violet that seizes my vision for several seconds, until finally I can comprehend the situation. By that point, the light has already vanished. This is terrible, too cruel. Using such a tactic to trick her, you're no real father. Ow. Oh, we did. As I hurry to sit my body up, I feel the pain in my right shoulder from hitting the wall. Still, it's not bad enough to stop me from moving. I grip my teeth and stand up. Marty's gone. The director and whale, too. Could they. I wasn't able to see the whale for more than a second, and I couldn't see what happened after that at all. Just like when it appeared in the director's office. It was in the midst of casting a wriggling shadow. In that case, it's incomplete. All right, we're gonna wrap this one up here. I think we've only got one more to go, but we shall see, and I'm sure you'll let me know if there's anything I missed. So we'll wrap it up here. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. I can't even words today. I can't, fucking hell. It's the lack of beard, I guess. This is what gave me my powers, and I took it away. My powers have still not been able to read very well. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll see you in the next one.